ഹലോ എരു വൺ വെൽക്കം ബാക്ക് ടു എറോ ഹോപ്പ് ആൻഡ് വെൽക്കം ടു ദ സീരീസ് ഓഫ് ലെക്ചേഴ്സ് ഇൻ എറോ സ്പേസ് സ്ട്രക്ചേഴ്സ് ഇൻ ദ പ്രീവിയസ് ലെക്ചർ വി ഡിസ്കസ്ഡ് അബൌട്ട് ദ എസ്റ്റിമേഷൻ ഓഫ് സ്ട്രെസ് ആസ് വെൽ ആസ് ലോഡ് ഇൻ ദ ടെൻഷൻ ഫീൽഡ് ബീം ആൻഡ് വി എസ്റ്റിമേറ്റഡ് ദ ഡയഗണൽ ടെൻഷൻ സ്ട്രെസ് ദ സിഗ്മ ടി ഈസ് ഇക്വൽ ടു ടു ടൈംസ് ഡബ്ല്യൂ ബൈ ടി ഇൻ ടു ഡി സൈൻ ടു ആൽഫ വർ ആൽഫ ഇസ് ദി ആംഗിൾ ഓഫ് ഡയഗണൽ ടെൻഷൻ ടി ഇസ് ദ തിക്നെസ് ആൻഡ് ഡി ഇസ് ദി ഡെപ്ത് ഓഫ് ദ or the width of the beam and also we estimate the value of sigma is z which is nothing but the stress acting in the horizontal direction of the tension field beam and that is equal to w by td tan alpha and alpha is nothing but the angle of diagonal tension and in this lecture we will estimate the value of sigma y which is nothing but the vertical stress acting on the tension field beam the vertical stress acting on tension field beam due to the diagonal tensile stress sigma t okay for that we have to consider a portion of the beam and the length of the portion is z and we have a plane m m and we can see here this is the upper flange this is a top flange and this is a bottom flange and in the top flange we have a direct load of ft in the bottom flange we have a direct load of fb and on this plane mm i have a direct stress sigma z which is nothing but the stress acting in the horizontal direction and also we have the value of shear stress we have already estimated the value of sigma z and tau tau is nothing but the value of shear stress now to find out the value of direct load acting on both top flange and bottom flange we have to use the equation of static equilibrium okay that is we have to use the summation of force should be equal to zero and summation of moment that also should be equal to zero we have to either use the summation of moment should be equal to zero or summation of force should be equal to zero okay for to find out the value of uh, force acting on the top flange i will be using the summation of moment should be equal to zero okay so i will take moment about the bottom flange so taking moment about bottom flange you can see we have a load of w acting at a distant uh, is it okay so w into is it should be this is the external moment and this should be equal to the internal moment okay so ft is the load acting on the top flange into the perpendicular distance that is d minus sigma z okay that is the sigma z into thickness into d sigma z into thickness into d gives the force okay into d by 2 because sigma z is acting at the we are assuming that sigma z is acting at the center of the web okay so that that's why the perpendicular distance is d by 2 i repeat this distance is d by 2 okay and in the case of shear stress we are not considering the moment because shear stress is very minimum when comparing to the all other loads acting considering here okay so i'll be getting w is equal to ft into d minus sigma is at t d square by 2 now we will substitute the value of sigma is at as sigma is equal we already found out sigma is equal to w by td tan alpha and rearranging the equation i will be getting the value of ft is equal to w z by d plus w by 2 tan alpha okay so that's uh, so this is the value of direct load acting on the top flange okay now we got the value of direct load acting on the top flange now what you will do is we will use the summation of force equilibrium equation okay that is we will use summation of force acting in the horizontal direction in the in this case we will use the value is at summation of force along is at should be zero that is sigma is at into d into t this is also in along is at direction that is horizontal direction also we have fb okay the ultimate aim is to find out the value of direct load fb and by using the equation of static equilibrium in which summation of force along horizontal direction should be equal to 0 i'll be getting the value for fb 
to solving the forces horizontally i can get the equation fb you can see the figure in the figure now fb minus ft plus sigma z into t into d is equal to zero okay and substituting the value of sigma z we derived this in the previous uh, lecture and ft we just derived now and we substitute the value sigma z and ft in equation number 2 i'll be getting fb is equal to w into z that is a moment divided by d minus w by 2 tan alpha okay in the case of ft it will be w z by d plus w by 2 tan alpha okay now we found out the value of direct load acting on the top flange and bottom flange now it is important to find out the value of stress acting in the vertical direction we in the last lecture we derived the equation for stress acting in the horizontal direction now in this lecture we will derive the important stress which is nothing but the stress acting on the vertical direction for that we need a horizontal plane hc if you remember in the last lecture i have taken a 2d element and i used a vertical plane from this point to here you can see i use a vertical plane and i derived the value of sigma z similarly i use a horizontal plane hc and i will go for the vertical equilibrium i can get sigma y in the vertical vertical plane hc i have a direct stress sigma y and a shear stress tau okay and this sigma t causes a vertical stress sigma y and this vertical stress vertical stress sigma y is responsible for compressive stress on the vertical stiffness that is arranged throughout the tension field beam so this the value of sigma y is really important in the analysis of tension field beam because due to the uh, formation of sigma y or due to the effect of sigma y the vertical stiffness will be undergoing compressive load okay will, will be undergoing compression and the we to find out the value of sigma y we will be using the equation of static equilibrium so the vertical equilibrium yields sigma y into hc into thickness t which is nothing but the force should be equal to sigma t cd into t sin alpha we are going for vertical equilibrium and instead of cd i'll be converting cd in terms of hc that is we have the angle we have no we know that alpha is the angle of diagonal tension so from this triangle i can get sin alpha is equal to cd by hc so cd will be equal to hc sin alpha you substitute cd as hc sin alpha so i'll be getting sigma y hc t is equal to sigma t instead of cd i'll substitute hc sin alpha into t sin alpha so i'll be getting sigma y sigma y is equal to sigma t sin square alpha this hc t will be cancelling on the both side you can see hc t here and here this will be getting cancelled so finally i'll be getting sigma y is equal to sigma t into sin square alpha and in the previous lecture we derived that sigma t is equal to tau by sin alpha cos alpha okay we derived that sigma t is equal to tau by sin alpha cos alpha now so we will substitute the value of sigma t here so sigma y is equal to tau by sin alpha cos alpha into sin square alpha so i can cancel out one sin alpha on the numerator and one in the denominator so i'll be getting sigma y is equal to tau into tan alpha sin alpha by cos alpha is tan alpha and we have tau is equal to s by td we derived that and we assume that yes the applied load the shear load will be equal to the applied load on the beam so i'll be getting tau is equal to w by td now you substitute the value of tau as sigma y is equal to w by td into tan alpha so this is the equation for stress acting on the vertical axis or vertical plane okay so sigma y will produce compression in the stiffness and this compressive load is given by if you remember the figure you can see the figure in the video the previous uh, the diagram of tension field beam you can see sigma y is the vertical stress t is the 
T is nothing but the thickness and B is the width. Okay, B is the width up to which the vertical stiffness are arranged. Okay, you can see in the figure in the right hand side or see in the we can see the figure now of the construction of the beam. Okay, now we will substitute sigma y as W by T D tan alpha and we will reduce the equation for compressive load. You can see P is equal to sigma by T into B that is nothing but the compressive load acting on the stiffness. So we will have, we have the equation for sigma y as W by T D tan alpha. I substitute the equation. So if I will be getting P is equal to W B by D into tan alpha. This is the equation to find out the compressive load. Okay, now it is important to know that this vertical stiffness are mainly used to strengthen the beam and if the vertical stiffness are subjected to a certain amount of load this will buckle okay and the behavior of vertical stiffness in the tension field beam is almost like the behavior of a long column or a column okay so the equivalent length is given by L E is equal to D by root of 4 minus 2b by d where b is nothing but the distance between two stiffness and b is the distance between two stiffness d is the width of the beam and this equivalent length is valid when b is less than 1.5 into d okay most of the case most of the problem will be having this case okay when b is less than 1.5 into d and the equivalent length will be equal to the width of the beam when the B is greater than 1.5D. In most of the cases, we will be using equation number 8 that is DLE is equal to D by root of 4 minus 2B by D. Okay, so we derived the equation for stresses and load. Now, it is uh, one, one of the important parameter of tension field beam is angle of diagonal tension okay and you are aware that the 2d element we have defined while deriving the equation is inclined at an angle 45 degree okay this is valid only when the top flange and bottom flange as well as the stiffness are rigid that means they are not undergoing any deformation okay but practically speaking we don't have a diagonal tension angle of 45 degree okay in most of the cases in airframe structures the diagonal tension angle is less than 38 degrees okay so this angle of diagonal tension will adjust itself due to adjust itself with respect to the total strain energy okay the angle alpha will adjust in such a way that the total strain energy should be minimum okay this is a condition for equilibrium for any structures the total strain energy should be minimum and the angle will be adjusted with respect to that okay and we will be having lots of equation to satisfy the condition for minimum potential energy or minimum total strain energy okay and one of the important equation is tan square alpha is equal to sigma t plus sigma f by sigma t plus sigma s where sigma f and sigma s are nothing but the uniform direct compressive stress induced in the induced by diagonal tension okay this sigma f and sigma s sigma s sigma f and sigma s is nothing but the direct compressive stress acting on flanges and stiffness okay sigma f for flanges and sigma s is for the stiffness okay and most of the in most of the problem we'll be using this equation equation number 11 tan power 4 alpha is equal to 1 plus td t is the thickness d is the width of the beam by 2 af where af is the cross sectional area of the flange divided by 1 plus tb where b is nothing but the distance between two vertical stiffness divided by as as is nothing but the cross sectional area of a stiffener okay so through this we have um, derived the equation that is sigma is that it is nothing but the horizontal force acting on the horizontal stress acting on the diagonal tension field beam sigma y that is nothing but the vertical stress acting in the 
web of a pure tension field beam and we derived sigma t this is nothing but a diagonal tension stress and we also derived the value of ft fb which is the direct load acting on top flange and bottom flange and also we derived the equation for alpha we haven't derived and this equation is very important to for you for competitive exam and university exam and this is one of the important equation and we'll solve some pro numerical problem to get a better idea about this uh, tension field beam so that's all about this lecture thank you for listening take care